A good late afternoon and thanks for joining us. I'm Holly and you're watching Kalkine TV live from Sydney. This is the last show of the day, the last trade. And there's no better way to wind down the day than with today's market close commentary. So let's dive straight in. Australian shares ended higher for the second session led by gains in blue chip energy, miners and tech stocks. The market sentiment was boosted by regulatory approval of the Pfizer-BioNTech vaccine while easing worries of winding up the economic stimulus by the Federal Reserve also lifted the mood. Meanwhile, coronavirus concerns showed some sign of abating as 753 new COVID-19 infections were recorded in New South Wales in the past 24 hours compared to the record 818 cases registered yesterday. So a slight drop there. And the ASX 200 closed 13.10 points or 0.17% higher during the day's trade. The index opened higher and gained as much as 0.46% to hit an intraday high. Among the individual stocks, infection prevention company Nanosonics topped the gainers list with a whopping 21.5% gain. Some of the other notable gainers were internet service provider Unity Group financial services firm Hub24, real estate firm Centre and retail travel outlet Flight Centre Travel Group. Meanwhile, online retailer Koken.com emerged as the worst performer with a 15.84% loss. Among others, engineering services firm Monodelphus Group, healthcare firm Ansel, construction material Borrell and healthcare insurance company NIB Holdings were the top losers. Next up, let's see how the sectoral indices performed today. Well, the equity market witnessed mixed trading today as 7 of 11 sectoral indices ended higher. The energy sector emerged as the top performer with a 2.9% gain, followed by material, which rose 0.9%. Among others, material, utilities, AREIT and IT also settled with modest gains. Meanwhile, the consumer staple sector emerged as the top laggard for the second day with a 1.25% loss. Consumer discretionary, telecom and industrial sectors also ended with marginal losses. To the energy space now, and most of the stocks ended higher owing to a rise in crude oil prices. November delivery crude oil futures traded 0.4% up at 68.66 US a barrel. Whereas August delivery WTI crude oil futures traded 0.5% higher at 65.94 US a barrel. That was on the 24th of August. And among the sectoral stocks, Woodside Petroleum, Santos, Oil Search, Ampol, Beach, and Wally gained the most. Moving on now to the material space and the mining stocks extended gains for the second day despite a fall in iron ore prices. Index heavyweights BHP Group, Rio Tinto, Fortescue Metals and South32 were among the top gainers. In a similar trend, gold miner stocks closed higher owing to a rise in the price of the yellow metal. December delivery gold futures traded at around 1,805 US per ounce as continued concerns about the spread of COVID-19 globally shifted investors towards the yellow metal. Among the sectoral leaders, St. Barbara, Evolution Mining, De Grey, Silver Lake Resources and Romelius were among the top performers. Over to the banking space now and two of the big four lenders ended higher, while the remaining two settled in the red zone. Combank and NAB were the ones ending lower, while ANZ and Westpac closed in green. Moving on now, let's focus on the shares that hogged the spotlight today. While well, the share price of oil and gas producer Oil Search gained 3.5% in the intraday trade post their earnings release. Revenue rose 7% during the first half of the year ending June 30, while the core net profit zoomed 463%, a whopping increase. The company, which has announced its merger with Santos, declared an interim dividend of 3.3 US cents a share, its best since 2019. And shares of Australian engineering firm Monodelphus Group declined 
as much as 16.3%, a staggering loss there. The stock witnessed a surge in selling despite robust earnings for the 2021 financial year. As profit rose 29%, while revenue surged 18%, helped by a surge in demand for its services, especially in Western Australia. The company also declared a final fully frank dividend of 21 cents a share, much higher than 13 cents paid a year ago. And now before we look at some more shares that are in the news today, it's time for a short break. Tune in to stay updated while on the move. We will tell you where the crypto craze has reached. Where the property market is headed next. What the world is doing to become more environmentally friendly. Apart from tracking the daily market charter. Be on top of the latest news and announcements with Calkine TV. by Kalkine. Looking for a dream home? Well, that may sound easy, but it isn't. And from looking for a property that is the right fit for you in terms of cost and other factors, to zeroing down on the right mortgage plan, there are various aspects to consider. And for the latest slowdown in the property market, tune in on Calkine TV with me, Sage. I will give the latest updates on the property market as well as real estate stocks to help you make the right decision. Keep watching Property with Calkine. Hello and welcome back. I'm Holly and you're watching Kalkine TV live from Sydney. This is the last show of the day, the last trade. The share price of global shipbuilding company Austal tumbled a shocking 13.5% after it reported a drop in its earnings. Austal's revenue dropped 24.6% for the 2021 financial year, while earnings before interest and taxes declined 21% as well. Net profit after tax stood at 81.8.1 million, sorry, compared to the 89 million in financial year 20. And shares of medtech company Nanosonics rallied nearly 18% on robust earnings. The company reported significant growth in the second half of the 2021 financial year, with revenue rising 39% compared to the first half. For the full year, revenue increased 3% while operating profit before tax dropped to $11 million from the 12.4 a year ago. The company's global installed base surged 13% to 26,750 units. And construction materials manufacturer Borrell saw its shares drop as much as 6.7% after it scrapped dividends despite a rise in profit. The company's profit rebounded $639.9 million in the 21 financial year, compared to $1.14 billion in losses a year earlier. Revenue dropped to 6.7% and the company said it does not have adequate franking credits available to pay frank dividends. And mining services company Parenti Global Shares dropped a near hefty 6% following the earnings report for the 21 financial year. The statutory net profit after tax and amortization stood at $75.3 million in the second half of this year, compared to a first half statutory loss of $63.8 mil. Revenue slipped marginally to $2.02 billion from the $2.04 in the last year. While underlying earnings before interest, taxes and amortization fell as well to $170.8 million, compared to the $211.7 million in the prior period. Ansel, engaged in manufacturing of protective industrial and medical gloves, saw its shares nosediving over 10%, even after it declared record dividends for the 2021 financial year. The company announced a final dividend of 43.6 US cents, its highest dividend payment on record, 
after it reported robust growth in its earnings. The company's shares surged by 25.6%, while profit jumped 57.5% as well. Now, before we look at some more ASX listed shares that are in the news today, it's time for another short break. Property by Kalkine. Looking for a dream home? Well, that may sound easy, but it isn't. And from looking for a property that is the right fit for you in terms of cost and other factors, to zeroing down on the right mortgage plan, there are various aspects to consider. And for the latest slowdown in the property market, tune in on Kalkine TV with me, Sage. I will give the latest updates on the property market as well as real estate stocks to help you make the right decision. Keep watching Property with Kalkine. Hello and welcome back. I'm Holly and you're watching Kalkine TV live from Sydney. This is the last show of the day, the last trade. Financial services firm Hub24 shares rose nearly 7% after it hiked dividends following growth in its earnings. The company declared a final fully franked dividend of 5.5 cents a share for the 2021 financial year, up 57% compared to the last fiscal. Meanwhile, net profit after tax jumped 53%, while underlying group earnings before interest, taxes, depreciation and amortization rose 47%. And shares of gold mining company Oceana Gold rose over 3% after it temporarily suspended mining and most other activities at its McCrees and Waihee operations in New Zealand. The decision was taken after New Zealand's government implemented a countrywide COVID-19 alert level 4 lockdown. And homegrown aged care operator LCR STR Health sorry, shares traded 4% higher post earnings reports. The profit after tax rebounded to 6 million compared to 116.9 million in losses in the last fiscal on the back of government funding and grants. Revenue increased by 4.4% in the 2021 financial year, and they also declared a final dividend of 2.3 cents a share. Next up, voice communication software firm MNF Group saw its shares rising 10% on solid earnings for the 21 financial year. The recurring revenue climbed by 12% as well, as the earnings were the top of the end guidance supported by a rise in phone number growth. The underlying net profit after tax and amortization surged 16% as well. Boosted by strong earnings, the company raised its dividends by 25 cents to 7.6 cents a share. An Australian investment fund Spark Infrastructure shares traded marginally higher after it released results for the six-month ending June 30. The regulated and contracted asset base increased by 4.5% in the first half of the year, while look-through net operating cash flow rose 6.6%. Standalone net operating cash flow climbed 14.7% as well, and it declared an interim dividend of 6.5 cents a share, in line with its guidance provided at the start of the year. Now, before we look at some more trending updates from ASX listed shares, it's time for another short break. Tune in to stay updated while on the move. We will tell you where the crypto craze has reached. Where the property market is headed next. What the world is doing to become more environmentally friendly. Apart from tracking the daily market charter. Be on top of the latest news and announcements with Kalkine TV. Welcome back. I'm Holly and you're watching Kalkine TV live from Sydney. This is the last show of the day, the last trade. Shares of Pepper Money gained nearly 6% after the consumer finance company upgraded its earnings outlook. 
The net profit of the company surged 41% on a statutory basis, or 57% to $66.1 million on a pro forma basis, for the six months ending June 30. The company, however, has not declared any interim dividend. Now in our next segment, a look east towards the Asian market performance. Well, those markets continued gaining momentum for the second consecutive session today, tracking firm cues from Wall Street, which ended higher in the overnight trades. The market sentiment was bo boosted sorry, by regulatory approval to the Pfizer BioNTech vaccine, while easing worries of wising up and economic stimulus by the Federal Reserve also lifted the mood. The Hang Seng, the benchmark index of Hong Kong, was the best performer in the regional market, with a 1.6% gain, followed by South Korea's Kospi, which rallied 1.2%. Japan's decay traded higher as well by 0.9%, while China's Shanghai Composite rose 1%. Taiwan's weighted stock index gained 0.6%, while India's BSE Sensex rose 0.2% as well. Bucking the trend, though, Jakarta Stock Exchange in Indonesia dropped 0.5%. Moving on from Asia to the U.S. now, and Wall Street closed higher in the overnight trades, as sentiment was boosted after the U.S. Food and Drug Administration gave a nod to the coronavirus vaccine developed jointly by Pfizer and BioNTech. The approval of the vaccine has raised optimism about faster global economic recovery. And the Dow Jones surged 0.6%, while the benchmark S&P 500 added 0.8% as well. And the Nasdaq Composite settled a handsome 1.5% higher. Now before we look at the cryptocurrency space, it's time for another short break. Welcome back. You're watching Calcain TV live from Sydney. This is the last show of the day, the last trade. In this last segment now, let's have a quick look at the crypto market performance. While well, the cryptocurrency market traded marginally lower during the Asian trading hours today, with popular coins like Bitcoin, Ether and XRP witnessing selling pressure. The overbought conditions as well as regulatory issues kept investors sidelined. As the price of Bitcoin, the world's largest cryptocurrency by market cap, dropped over 1% to slip below the 50k level. It traded at about 49,500 US. Market analysts expect a period of consolidation ahead of Friday's option expiration date and news from the Federal Reserve's annual economic policy symposium in Jackson Hole, Wyoming. Ether, the world's second largest crypto, traded marginally lower at around 3,400 US. Cardano, the world's third largest crypto by market cap, continued its up move and rose over 3% to 2.9 US. Meanwhile, other known digital coins like XRP, Dogecoin, Stellar, Uniswap, Lotcoin, and Bancor were trading lower. Yesterday, American payment solutions company PayPal announced that it'll extend the crypto service to the UK. The company has decided to roll out its crypto offerings outside the US, allowing its users to buy, sell and hold four different cryptocurrencies on its platform. The company's UK customers will be able to transact in Bitcoin, Ether, Litecoin and Bitcoin Cash. The process will begin this week and should be available to all eligible customers within the next few weeks. Well, that is just about all for now in the last trade. With our existing operations in Australia, New Zealand, the UK and Canada, Calkine Media has launched its operations in US markets as well. Every day on our first show, the Global Market Roundup, you can get the latest and most important news from the US, Europe and Asia Pacific markets. 
So on that note, I'll see you tomorrow at 10 a.m. live from Sydney. Holly Shields signing off.